I've been spending the past week living with this 2020 Nissan Altima, and while it's not typically the kind of vehicle I spend a lot of time in, there were some parts of it that legitimately surprised me and that I ended up really liking. So we're gonna talk about the things that I love and hate about the 2020 Altima. Before we hop in the car, we'll do a quick overview walk around of the exterior, show you guys the window sticker too. So this is the Altima, it is the SL trim, but it, that does not stand for super Legera like on a Lamborghini. Uh, there's no carbon fiber on this vehicle at all. All wheel drive, which is pretty important in this segment. The Altima, I've got dual exhaust tips back here. And then let's see, window sticker is there on the passenger seat. Let's take a quick look at that. It is a 2020 Nissan Altima 2.5 SL all wheel drive. The engine, oh, the engine. The engine is a 2.5 liter four cylinder, naturally aspirated that makes 182 horsepower and 178 pound-feet of torque, which is not a lot, but is typical in this segment. Take a look under the hood. There's that four-cylinder. What I don't like about the powertrain is the transmission. It has a CVT, continuously variable transmission, and I've made it clear before that I am not a fan of CVTs at all. Uh, some people got quite offended at the fact that I was not a fan of CVTs, but in this vehicle, it's all about efficiency, and it does lead to quite good fuel economy. The rest of the window sticker is pretty standard. It doesn't have a ton of options on it. Just a couple of uh, lights, floor mats, splash guards, a little rear spoiler, some sensors. But it's a typically optioned 2.5 SL with an MSRP of just under $35,000. So this is towards the upper side of the Nissan Altima's trim. Start that thing up. Let's start off by talking about some of the positives, the things that I really loved about the Nissan Altima. The first one is gonna be these seats. Nissan calls them zero gravity seats, and no, they won't make you float and levitate like you were in outer space. Um, they won't cancel the effects of gravity, but what they do is provide really good amounts of support, and they are legitimately very comfortable. Uh, when I hopped in the vehicle, I just sat down and was like, whoa, these are, these are more comfortable than seats in my Ram, more comfortable than seats in some luxury cars. Uh, they're actually designed really nicely. They help prevent fatigue. I drove five hours out from Chicago to Michigan last week, and I mean, no, no extensive fatigue. They were really, really comfortable, and I love it. Second thing is going to be the steering wheel itself. It's a flat bottom steering wheel. I personally am used to fighting flat bottom steering wheels in like sportier cars, higher in Audis, like my S4, uh, my RS7 could come with a flat bottom steering wheel. Design is so you have more clearance uh, under your legs. But this is a actually quite nice steering wheel. It's got all the buttons here, and one of those buttons is the next thing I really loved about the Nissan Altima, and it's the driver assist suite. So if you press the button with the little kind of blue circles around a symbol of a car, you see in a center screen it pops up. You got forward, uh, let's see if I turn them on again. You have forward warning, your blind spot warning, and your lane keep assist. And in this top right-hand corner, there's also three icons. And as you're driving, the lane keep assist, the centering, the adaptive cruise control with the distance is amazing. I actually hopped in this car, got on the freeway, turned on the lane keep assist for the first time, and just started saying wow to myself out loud, alone in the car. I was that impressed. It was as good as the system found in my six-figure Audi RS7. That's how good the adaptive cruise control in this regular sedan is. So really good job, Nissan, on getting that figured out. It doesn't bounce you back and forth across the lane like a ping pong ball. It actively centers. So I drove most of the way on the freeway just with one hand on the wheel, paying attention. I didn't have to touch the brake or gas because it maintained distance with adaptive cruise, and it just took care of all of it. I really liked it. But now, one of the things regarding that that I didn't like is when you do happen to get close to a lane marker, if you sway a little bit out, take a turn too wide, the actual, the warning itself is really really harsh and not that refined. Sometimes you get a little bit of vibration or a beep. This one, like the whole steering wheel vibrates and it kind of rattles a little bit. I just, it's not that refined and I don't like it. I will demonstrate right now it's the passing zone, but if I get too close to the side, dude, let's keep going. Ugh. See, it doesn't like that. But it like vibrates a little hard. I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, the next thing that I didn't really like, the infotainment, if we go back to the home menu and you take a quick look, it's, it's, it's not intuitive or easy to use, and I, I, it's not the end of the world because what I just did is plugged in my iPhone and had Apple CarPlay on the entire time, which you just saw was open earlier, and Apple CarPlay solves all issues. Touchscreen there, not a huge fan of when they put the screen kind of mounted as a, looks like somebody forgot a tablet and stuck it in the middle, like the Ford Explorer has that. Um, Mercedes, I think the C-Class, the previous generation C-Class had that too. Just not a fan, I kind of like it when it's more integrated, but it is a touchscreen. Decent sound system too, Bose, um, good sounding sound system. 
The last thing I didn't really love in this vehicle is going to be that CVT again, that transmission. The powertrain itself, obviously being used to uh, higher horsepower performance vehicles is not even comparable, but that's not the point. So I reset my expectations comparing it to the cars that my dad owns. My dad has a, a Ford Fusion, which is really the same segment of this with a 2.5 liter. Actually, no, he used to have a 2.5 NA four cylinder and now it's an EcoBoost. So that has forced induction, but similar type of power level, similar efficiency. I don't like CVTs though. They just feel so weird. Like if you're just casually accelerating, the revs don't seem to follow where you expect them. Uh, they sometimes like hover there and it kind of hums along weirdly. And then, and then when you floor it, it also like does weird things. Like it goes, we, okay, I'm, I'm accelerating forward. And then it just drops immediately. I, I, I don't know. CVTs drive me a bit crazy. In this vehicle, I was able to kind of just forget about it because it has no intentions of being a performance vehicle. Not at all, not even remotely. And it got really good fuel economy. Take a look, let's see. This is 507 miles, a mix of highway and uh, regular driving, 37 MPG, which has gone down as I was driving more in city. But that's that's more than double what my R7 got, but obviously has a little four cylinder that has half the horse, not even half the horsepower. But the Nissan Altima, I was very pleasantly surprised with my experience. It provides a pretty good driver experience. Just a regular vehicle, regular family vehicle, driving from uh, Chicago out to Michigan, four and a half hours. I wasn't too exhausted. Adaptive cruise control running, sound system with my Apple CarPlay, playing the music I wanted, switch between some podcasts, some Spotify, dual zone climate control, AC runs nice and strong. Uh, we've got auto hold too. So when you come to a stop at a red light, it will hold the brake for you. It is a competitive vehicle now. Uh, it's efficient. It has the safety features. I was pretty impressed with my week in the Nissan Altima. But out of everything I just talked about, I cannot emphasize how impressed I was with the driver assistance features on this. It has, it's a $35,000 vehicle. And as cars get more and more expensive, it just happens. My dad Fusion was like, I don't know, under $20,000 because a lower option one. So this definitely has more content. But the fact that I legitimately felt that the lane keep assist system, adaptive cruise control on the freeway, that set of driver assistance features was competitive with what are the recent cars I drove recently that had that? I mean, my RS7, my Ram has, this is better than a system my Ram, um, BMWs. I had a $120,000 M850i and had a couple extra uh, bells and whistles in terms of the driver assistance stuff, but at its core, in terms of lane keeping assist and adaptive cruise when you're just on the freeway, this was just as functional and just as competent at allowing you to cruise along perfectly on the freeway. I had a pretty crazy past weekend. Got to drive, I mean, 700 horsepower Shelby GT500s, uh, McLaren 600 LTs. I drove a Dodge Demon making 1,000 horsepower on race gas. Then I, every time I finished filming those cars, I hopped in the Nissan Altima and was like, whoa, this thing is very, very not fast. But it got me here in comfort and uh, quickly and efficiently. And that is all you need in a vehicle like this. That is what people shopping for regular family sedans are looking for. And in the midsize segment, the Nissan Altima is a good option. And with that, I am heading back to my parents' house before I drive home to Chicago tonight. My dad, I think, is bringing home a Fusion that he just picked up. Um, and yes, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.